Understandably, after all of this that, that you've heard so far, people, of course, try to fight back against the intrusion uh, of chaos that they, they sense is in an eclipse. Too. They undertake ritual activity to liberate the imperiled sun or the moon. The Kwakiutl of uh, uh, North America's, uh, well, you can see people trying to do it, and they're the Kwakiutl in, in the northwest coast, burning boxes and blankets and food in a big bonfire, making a lot of noise uh, to send the big mouth in the sky off to some other diner. And by screaming and, and, and throwing stones into the air, the, the Siberian Buryats figured they could make the eclipse demon sufficiently unwelcome. South of what is now Los Angeles, the Luiseno Indians would sing songs prescribed for the sick moon and eclipse. They also clapped and, and, and shouted during an eclipse to drive away the animal that they said wanted to eat the sun or, or the moon. In Babylon, the priests uh, played loud copper instruments, paraded uh, to disperse the eclipse. Mirrors stood for the moon in China, uh, where banging on mirrors during eclipse is a time-honored tradition. And then uh, a total eclipse of the moon on the 16th of December, 1880, prompted the Muslims of Tashkent in what is now Uzbekistan uh, to rock the countryside with tambourines and gongs and iron pots until the bright light of the full moon returned and convinced that their efforts had, had chased away uh, the devil uh, who wanted to devour the moon, they uh, recovered then from their anxiety. Gunfire and gongs and, and um, yells also worked their magic in Laos during the lunar eclipse on the 15th of March, 1877. And Griffith Observatory has also reliably worked to rescue the sun and the moon at numerous e e eclipses. Uh, noise during the eclipse certainly seems helpful, but, but many peoples were certain that firing projectiles into the sky, presumably at the offending uh, intruder, had a salutary influence. Direct evidence of, of that action was taken uh, by an Indian living in what is now southern Oklahoma in the vicinity of Fort Sill during the solar eclipse, total solar eclipse of the 29th of July, 1878. While most uh, of this fellow's neighbors were praying on their knees and threw themselves in the ground in, in terror, this fellow stepped out of his lodge armed with his pistol uh, and pointed at the sun, fired one round uh, just at the end of totality. And no one, <laughs> no one disputed that he and his bullet were responsible for settling the entire fair satisfactorily and without further consequence, uh, including what seemed like a certain dissolution of the sun that had, had been avoided. That 1878 eclipse was famously witnessed by Thomas Edison. You can see him. He's the, the second person from the right in, in this picture. And he traveled to Rawlins, Wyoming, to observe it with the infrared detector that he invented. And because the astronomers who had arrived before him had already claimed uh, that felicitous ground and, and the structures for their instruments, Edison had to set up up his uh, thesometer in, in a hen house. Uh, apocryphal accounts of his experience report that the chickens all came home uh, to, to roost during totality uh, and, and, and turned the eclipse into another exercise of clucks and feathers uh, in which the sun was again devoured by darkness, this time by chickens. Uh, just a little over a century later, uh, a newspaper in India carried this item uh, following the total solar eclipse of February 16, 1980. Panic gripped the state police headquarters here when an armed constable fired off 10 rounds from his rifle aiming at the eclipse sun. The constable reportedly said he was a devotee of Ram Deb who had told him in a dream last night to stop the eclipse. He opened fire at the eclipse sun at 3.45 p.m. I'm looking forward to such reports this August. Oh. It, it, it's easy. Now, come on. It's easy to, to, to ridicule these various measures people have taken on behalf of the sun or the moon suffering eclipse, but the record is clear. They never fail. <laughs> the sun and moon inevitably return to their, their full brilliance and, 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 and then uh, they're, they're properly uh, back in place. Well, understanding how eclipses happen, predicting when they will, uh, becomes possible only after the movements of the sun and the moon are mapped uh, and, uh, and monitored. Uh, the ancient Mesopotamians, for example, uh, were able to predict eclipses, at least to some extent. The ancient Chinese and the ancient Maya, uh, whether they um, had uh, precise measures, uh, they, they had some predictive uh, techniques available to them. And everybody reacted to eclipses, whether they could predict them or not. Now, of course, we are no longer devoured by darkness and driven by eclipse despair. Red-hot eclipses now transport us <laughs> at, at high speed. In fact, we also now chew on eclipses. In fact, we eat them, and we eat them, and we eat them, and, and, and we drink them. 
and, and in fact, we're intoxicated by them, total eclipse, black ale, corona, of course, and uh, not to mention total eclipse of the hop. Uh, we <laughs> consume all of these in our eclipse enthusiasm. Thank you very much. <laughs> a few questions up there. Well, so the Eclipse, uh, I think uh, a part of the uh, Mark Twain tale, uh, can, it, can they have a Yankee yes. in King Arthur's court? Sure. Was he not proclaimed as a wizard when he brought the sun back? Yeah, a, a classic story, of course, as, as you've referenced uh, in uh, Mark Twain's um, uh, very famous uh, n novel. Uh, it's, it's a completely fabricated eclipse, of course, and, and constructed st strictly for, for the narrative. But in fact, it, it repeats a fable that's often been uh, in, invoked of, of the contrast between uh, primitive culture, so-called, and, and someone who has the knowledge. And it just goes to show that uh, anyone that actually possesses astronomical knowledge is, at the heart, exploitive of others. <laughs> <laughs> The, the slide where you were talking about the orbital nodes, uh, I don't I don't understand that concept of node. Uh, the uh, the lunar orbit is inclined with the solar ecliptic, and the Earth orbit is inclined with respect to the solar ecliptic. Is that where the nodes come in? The differences in the inclination of the Earth's orbit and the lunar orbit. Uh, with respect to the solar ecliptic, I, I just don't understand. The yeah, in a, in a sense, it, what you said is exactly true, and let me just clarify it with uh, 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 the vocabulary might help. If you watch the sun go around the sky, of course it, it swings around the sky every day, and, and we see it rise and cross over and set. But as you also well know, the sun appears to move with respect to the background stars over the course of a year. And that's just a reflection of the Earth's movement around the sun. But here on the Earth, we don't feel the movement. And if you monitor the sky from, from the ground, uh, you can say it looks like that. So the sun has a path through the sky that goes through uh, the very familiar zodiac constellations. The moon also has a path orbiting around the Earth. But that path is, just as you said, inclined slightly to the sun's path. And it's inclined slightly five degrees, but that still means it intercepts the sun's path in two places. And those two places are the nodes. So you can imagine the moon going around its cycle, it goes around once a month, the sun going around its path, although it's really the Earth, going around once a year. And occasionally, those two objects wind up on a node at the same time. They're, of course, going at different rates. They're independent motions. But geometrically, now and then, they occupy a node, each of them. Maybe the same or maybe opposite ones. And of course, depending on which one it is, you either have an eclipse of the sun or an eclipse of the moon. I hope that uh, makes it a little bit clearer. One more, yes. How many uh, eclipses can you have in one year? You can have as many as seven, but we're never really quite that lucky. Uh, so uh, grab them when you can. And, and they last, how long do they last? Oh, how long does the eclipse last? Uh, it, the, the, a total eclipse of the, what, what we're talking about here, it, let, me, let me back up a little bit because um, when you talk about duration, um, I want to make sure that it, it's clear in everyone's mind. And first, uh, we're all very focused on total eclipses of the sun because they are, in fact, perhaps the most transcendent thing that you'll ever see happening in the sky, followed closely by the aurora. Uh, so so th there's, there's a lot of attention spotlighted on totality of a total eclipse. And that can last anywhere from a moment where the, the eclipse just barely uh, occurs as total to up to approximately seven minutes. And the, the last time we had was 91. And it goes by like that. <laughs> uh, well, well, a very, uh, very celebrated uh, individual at uh, JPL has said that all eclipses last eight seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What do you call that area of study? No astronomy? I'm sorry, what? 
Archaeo, 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 Archaeo. It is just, it is just astronomy and culture. That's, that's, that's all it is. Yeah, astronomy and culture. Is your tie for sale? <laughs> <laughs> no. I shall be wearing it as I have at previous eclipses at the, at the next eclipse. This one, by the way, will be number 15 for total solar eclipses for me. I have a question yeah. for you. Yeah. On the, uh, the Sioux winter count, there were two stars to yeah. the upper left. Were yeah. those identified with those planets or were they correct? It, it, no, perfectly good question. And to my knowledge, nobody has actually you know, bothered to, to look at that, uh, but it is presumed there are a couple of planets, and I have to confess I haven't even looked either, but it's a simple thing to do. You would know right away and be able, and, and they probably are Venus and something else. For those yeah. of you who have not seen one, that's one of the beautiful things about an eclipse of the planets come out, and it's really a breathtaking sight. There was one more question in the back, and then we'll move on. Yes, um, you mentioned a lot of different areas of the Earth, but, I, but I, except for Mesopotamia, what other, did you get into Africa at all? It seemed like there was, like, the continent of Africa was not mentioned as one of your geographies, and I was wondering about that. The, the, there is relatively little uh, eclipse lore recorded from traditional cultures in Africa. It does not mean uh, that it, it doesn't exist, uh, but uh, the, I actually left out a lot of stuff uh, and, and, and so uh, uh, th th there are a few examples where we have from traditional cultures, and it's a similar kind, uh, kind of thing. So. Well, let's thank uh, Dr. Trump one more time. <laughs>